there is a definite empirical uh, connection between inequality defined economically and uh, uh, values. You know, everyone in that audience last night was one of the winners in the great social lottery called making it in this world. And here they are very passionately concerned about the situation of these people in China. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, e even to be concerned about someone beyond your neighborhood is an, an, an achievement. Mm -hmm. I think it's an achievement of, of civil societies. Mm -hmm. I think it's an achievement of societies which, uh, which have mastered the basic problems of living and where we can be more concerned about other issues than just day-to-day -day survival. And I, I think that's a problem in, in business where everything is sort of predicated on the bottom line, like that's the defining characteristic for everything. Well, what about Engelhardt's research on post-materialistic values? So what is it in our experience of growing up in a social system that predisposes or, or enhances the likelihood that we will have some concern mm -hmm. for people we don't know? Right. And that was really the topic of my presentation. We talk about outgroup trust. Yeah. Yeah. And in a society where there are these kinds of institutional provisions, we can be more trustful. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, uh, we can trust strangers. Uh, Partly because we know they take care, they, they take our interests into consideration. Because if they don't, they're going to get into trouble. Right. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I want to live in such a society. And I get real worried when I'm in a different kind of society. Well, how about profit sharing? I mean, I'm just talking off the wall here. Suppose, suppose. It, a company uh, engages its employees in profit sharing, like John Lewis mm -hmm. in Britain, right? This is a company that shares its profits with the people, uh, with the employees. Mm -hmm. So if the company does well during the year, I think last year they had a 19% bonus, pay bonus. Wow, mm -hmm. that's substantial, right? Because they've done particularly well. Mm -hmm. Then you get people working like blazes. Then, policies, yeah. po uh, uh, policies that apply to everybody, like health care policies, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody is equal in terms of their fatedness to be uh, subject to illness and, and death, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, uh, yeah. w what does the company do to uh, put provisions which promote equality into place? So, all our employees have access to health care not just the upper level. All of our employees have access to a pension plan, even though they may not be earning very much. Those sorts of okay. issues that are within the ambit of the company in terms of policy. Well, of course, it, it can be a very powerful marketing tool to claim that you're doing the right thing, and a lot of companies involved in or CSR activities will will trumpet them widely uh, as a, in in order to generate uh, uh, a good publicity for their for their company, mm -hmm. um, particularly when that uh, contribution is, is 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 seen to improve the lot of everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, where it becomes tangible how I'm benefiting from the fact that this corporation is, is engaged in these green projects, mm -hmm. for example. So, and, and, and what does that do in a social system where people have that confidence in the system? Does it, first of all, potentiate uh, volunteerism and community uh, uh, corporate social responsibility? And does, in turn, that higher incidence of corporate social responsibility build the kind of society with positive outcomes in terms of what happens between you and me because we know and, and feel that we are functioning within such a social system. Are we potentiating certain human outcomes in these systems? Now, we have to start measuring those things. 